Poem number one of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. One. Slowly maturity has come to our surprise, placing its hands upon the naked forehead of our love, looking upon it with its dimmer eyes. And in the garden shriveled by July, the flowers and shrubs and vibrant leaves have let fall their fervent powers which lie over the misty pond and gentle pass and bitterly the jealous sun now shows harshly a brilliant shadow round its light that grieves and yet see how the fearless hollyhocks aspire ardently to their own splendid fire see how season after season's stress is vain the fibres of our hearts deeper than ever and insatiable are rooted firmly in our happiness o oh, hours of afternoon fragrant with rose clutching at time with cheek in flower and flame seeking against his chilly side repose and nothing nothing is better than to feel happy and limpid still after what years but if fate had willed above for us too naught but suffering and tears still would i have wished to live and die complaintless in such unrelenting love end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number two of afternoon by emil verharen translated by charles r murphy read for librivox .org by sonia two roses of june you the most fair you with your hearts transpierced by sun violent tranquil roses with the air of halted flights of birds upon a bough roses of june and july straight and new begun mouths whose kisses all at once are thrilled with the wind or with it stilled caressing with shade and gold the moving green roses mutely ardent and sweet-willed voluptuous roses in your sheaths of moss you who pass the long summer time loving each other in this clarity sublime fresh magnificent vivid like you o oh roses is our multitudinous desire that in lassitude or leaping fire loves exalts and then reposes end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem number three of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Three. If other flowers decorate our home and multiply the splendor of this place, the little lake shines ever from the grass with the large eyes of its ever moving face. Ah, say from what deep distances unknown so many gleaming birds have come with wings sun sown july has driven april from the close and bluish tints have given place to red the skies are torpid and the wind has fled joyously brilliant insects fill the air that harks and summer wanders by robed with diamonds and sparks end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem number four of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Four. Shadows are lustral in the iris dawn. From a branch on high, whence a bird has fled, dewdrops tremble and are gone. Purity, delicate and fair, beautifies the hour that brings crystal brilliance to the air. We hear the sounds of water and the brush of wings. Oh, how your eyes are beauteous at this hour, when our silver lake is gleaming in the sight of the day arising. Your forehead radiant and your heart beat light. Intensity of life, its goodness and its power, like to a mighty blessedness of your soul apart. So that to contain the anguish and the stress, suddenly your hands have clasped my own laying them as though with fear against your heart end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Poem number five of Afternoon by Emil Verharen. Translated by Charles R. Murphy. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Five. I bring you this eve an offering of joy from having drenched my body in the gold and silken texture of the joyous wind and in the yellow splendor of the sun. My feet are pure with having walked the grass, my hands are sweet with the dim hearts of flowers, my eyes are brilliant with the sudden tears, born in an instant from the sight of such a beauteous earth and its eternal night. Space, with arms of burning clarity, drunk and fervent, sobbing, led me on, and I have gone down there, I know not where, where all my captive cries did free my steps. I bring you life and beauty of the plains. Take from me their free and bounteous breath. Storms have laid caresses on my hands, and air and light and perfume are in me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number six of Afternoon by Emil Verhagen. Translated by Charles R. Murphy. Read for LibriVox.org by Ezwa in Belgium in January 2017. Come, let us rest a while beside the path, upon the aged bench long stained with mould, and let me leave between your two sure hands my hand abandoned to your gentle hold. And as my hand that lies upon your knees is glad to be abandoned there and knows contentment, so my sweet and fervent heart between your gentle hands has found repose. And there is joy intense and love profound of which we do partake together now, nor trembles on our lips a single word too strong, nor any kiss that burns your brow. We would prolong the ardor of this silence, of mute desires, the immobility, save that, when they quiver of a sudden, I press your pensive hands unknowingly. Your hands wherein my happiness is sealed. Your hands which never would attempt to reach to all these sacred and profounder things whereby we live without the need of speech. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number seven of Afternoon by Emil Verhagen. Translated by Charles R. Murphy. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. 7. Sweetly and more sweetly still, cradle in your arms my head, my fevered eyes and forehead wearied. Sweetly and more sweetly still, kiss my lips and say words made sweeter at each break of day when uttered by your voice, that you are given to me and that I love you still. The day has broken dull and sad, my sleep was swept with sombre dreams. The rain lets down its dusky hair in streams, and skies are lost in dreary clouds that weep. Sweetly and more sweetly still cradle in your arms my head, my fevered eyes and forehead wearied. You are to me the gracious morn whose caress is in your hand. Behold, I am reborn, with no evil or dismay, unto the daily work which marks my way. A sign that makes me live in an heroic strife, a sword of beauty and of power divine against invidious life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 8 of Afternoon by Emil Verhagen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. 8. Within the house our love has chosen for its birth, with its familiar things that people coin and shade, where we too live alone with only witnesses, the roses gazing through the window from the glade. There are some days so filled with reassuring peace, 
hours of the radiant summer with silence made so fair i sometimes bring to stillness the balancing of time within the great oak clock that stands close by the stair then is the hour the day the night so part of us that happiness which breathes upon us hears no thing except the ardent throbbing of your heart and mine when quick embraces heart to yearning heart do bring end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem nine of afternoon by emil ferharen translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by carolyn nine my pleasant work by open windows wide with shadow of green leafage from outside and path of the sun's light across my paper white maintains a gentle violence a sense of silence in our kindly pensive house vividly the flowers lean and glowing fruits among the boughs are seen birds on boughs and birds upon the wing chant and sing in order that my verse may ring clear and new pure and true as song of birds and gold of fruits and petals blossoming down in the garden there i see you pass over the sunny and the shady grass but you do not look at me lest you trouble my tranquillity as here with jealous heart i fashion poems of a frank and tender passion end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem ten of afternoon by emil ferharen translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by carolyn ten all faith lies at the bottom of our love joining an ardent thought to everything the faint awakening blossom or above downward the drift of petals from a rose the flight of bird on dark or sunlit wing a nest half falling from a roof that knows much of the wind's harsh manner here is scope and in the flowery heart where insects cling for fear and all of hope what matters it if reason with its snows falls chilling on such poignant ecstasy let us accept it with a mind that knows no false no true no evil and no good that it may hold prophetically let us be happy with our childish eyes be it an evil or triumphant power and let us hide from men who are too wise End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 11 of Afternoon by Emil Ferharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. 11. Dawn, shadow, evening, space and stars, what night, hides in its veils or shows forth mistily, add to their exaltation they who live in love live also in eternity no need that reason light its beacon fires on walls that near them high above the ground kindling the docks the harbour and the sea for they beyond all ocean's paths are bound they see the light of dawns touch shore on shore beyond and far beyond the black sea's space for certitude and trembling hope themselves meeting their ardent gaze have the same face joyous and limpid is their hungry faith their soul is the profound and sudden light which burns for them on high and heavenly things to know the world within they turn their sight they go by distant paths and live with truths 
that bound the far horizon of their eyes simple and naked deep and sweet as dawn for them alone are songs of paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number 12 of afternoon by emil verhagen translated by charles r murphy Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in January 2017. It is the pleasant hour when lamps are lit, calmness and consolation over all. The silence is so deep that one could hear a feather fall. It is the hour when the beloved comes, like to the sweetly soft and low wandering mist upon the breeze, sweetly slow she speaks no word at first and yet i hark hark to the soul of her surprise its gleam and dark and then i kiss her eyes it is the pleasant hour when lamps are lit the vow to love each other through the livelong day from depths of heart made luminous by it is with us now and then we speak of simple things the fruit we gathered in the close, the flowers that disclose between the verdant mosses thick their almost wings. And thought does blossom forth once more, at memory of a word so fair hid in a just-remembered drawer in a letter of last year. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 13 of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. 13. Dead kisses of the long-dead years have left their mark upon your face, beneath the sad, harsh winds of age, of many roses now there is no trace. I see not now your mouth and eyes, gleam like the birth of morning fair nor softly now your head repose within the dark deep garden of your hair your dear hands that still are sweet have somehow suffered from the loss of light about their finger-tips that touched my forehead like the dawn-kissed moss your body that was fair and young that i did with my thoughts endow no longer now is fresh as dew your arm no longer like the white clean bough all falls alas and fades away all changes now your voice once smooth your body lowered like a shield to spill the precious victories of youth and yet my heart says still with fervent stress what matter that the years grow heavier since i know well that nothing can e'er bound or trouble our exalted happiness and that our souls are too profound for love to die for want of loveliness end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 14 of Afternoon by Emil Verhagen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in January 2017. It is now fifteen years that we have thought as one, and that our passion clear has conquered habitude, such as is wont to injure the most tenacious love with unremitting stress of wasteful hands and rude. And when I look at you, I make discoveries, such is the intimacy your pride and sweetness bring and time though it has somewhat obscured your loveliness exalts your heart whose golden depths are opening naively now you let its hidden depths be searched your soul yet always seems as fresh as kindled fire and like a eager ship with wind-swept masts our joy voyages upon the seas of our desire Within ourselves alone, we anchor all our faith to naked frankness and to high benevolence. 
and we work and live forever in the light of a joyous and translucent confidence. You have the strength of frailty and infinite purity to walk the somber roadways, your heart in aureole and to have cherished dearly in spite of mist or shade all the rays of morning in your childlike soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 15 of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. 15. I thought our joy had been for ever dulled, like sun that fades before the day has fled, when sickness, to a bed of weariness, slowly dragged me with its arms of lead. Garden and flowers were either feared or false, the very light of day was a distress, and my poor hands already were too weak to hold our trembling, captive happiness my desires became but evil plants that scourged like thistles in a windy place i felt my heart both frozen and afire then arid and rebellious unto grace but nowhere searching save in simple love the most consoling word of all you spoke and at the glowing fire of your word i warmed myself until the daylight broke I was not in your eyes as in my own, a man belittled by disease and grief. You plucked me flowers from the window ledge, and I believed in health with your belief. You brought to me within your garment's folds the eager air, the wind of field and wood, scents of the eve and odours of the dawn, and sunlight in your kisses, fresh and good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 16 of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. 16. All that lives about us here, beneath a radiance soft and clear, soft grasses tender branches hollyhocks the shade that soothes them the wind that mocks the singing birds that one by one join the brilliant swarm like jewel clusters warm with sun all that lives within the garden wall love us ingenuously and we we love them all dear to us the lilies that grow high the reaching sunflowers clearer than the sky circles that bright lambent tongues enroll burn with their glowing fervency our soul the simple flowers flocks and lilac tall down by the wall are yearning to be near us too and the involuntary grass on the lawn when we pass opens its moistened eyes that are the dew we live with flowers and the grass simple pure and ardent still lost in our love like single sheaves within the infinite wheat and proudly let imperial summer pass and from above sweep and pierce with clarity body heart and will end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem seventeen of afternoon by emil verharen translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by carolyn seventeen with all my heart and brain my feeling and my seeing and with the flaming torch of all my being that reaches toward your goodness and your love forever unassuaged i love and bring you thanks and endless praise for having come in all simplicity along devoted ways to take with gracious hands my destiny 
and since you leaned above i know oh what a love candid and clear as is the dew fallen upon my tranquil soul from you i am yours as by their nerves of flame fire and fuel merge all my flesh and all my soul strive to you with undesisting urge nor do i cease from long remembering the fervency and beauty of our years till suddenly i feel my eyes are filled deliciously with unoblivious tears i come to you happy and resolved with proud desire to be unto your soul he who shall be the surest of its joys tenderness folds us in an aureole echoes within me at your call assemble the hour is holy and with rapture fraught and just to touch your brow my fingers tremble as though they brushed the pinions of your thought end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem eighteen of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Eighteen, O oh, days of fresh and quiet healthfulness, when life is filled with beauty without end, and inspiration comes familiarly, a cherished friend. He comes from lands all sweet and glimmering and with his words more fair than dew has brought wherewith to set a gem all luminous a sentiment a thought he seizes on our being like a storm rears up our spirit to new heights untrod pours down the fire from beating stars and brings the gift of being god all fevered transports and profoundest fears to his own tragic will are ever whirled that the pulse of beauty be made young in the veins of the world i am at his mercy am his ardent prey so when from weary work i take my way toward the deep repose which is your love with all my mind's high leaping fire sublime it seems oh for an instant's time that i may offer you o oh love as though of my own pulses it were part of the great universe itself the beating heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem number nineteen of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Nineteen. I have left the groves of sleep, sad a little to leave you hid beneath their branchy roof from morning sun and dew. Gleam now flocks and hollyhock. I look on joyous garden side, and know that soon the crystal bells will tinkle in the light then suddenly i take my way to you with such a tenderness and love that sweep into my midmost being that it seems my thought has travelled through to bring you joy of reawakening all the leafy umbrage of your sleep and when i come to you within the house that shade and silence still possess hear my ardent kisses fresh and clear sing you a morning song through meadows of the flesh end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number twenty of afternoon by emile verharen translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by sonia twenty alas when the poison of disease ran with my slow and torpid blood more sluggish and more torpid day by day ran in my veins a leaden flood and my poor eyes saw my hands so thin and white morosely watched the dreaded course of the hated blight 
when I had not even force upon your heart my burning mouth to press, there to kiss our happiness, when the days, monotonous and sad, gnawed my consciousness with spite, I never could myself have found the will to rise with stoic might if you had not poured into my veins the secret heroism that you have daily every hour of every week with hands so patient so serene and brave end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number 21 of afternoon by emil verharen translated by charles r murphy read for LibriVox.org by sonia 21 within the garden there is healthfulness lavishly it gives it us in light that cleaves to every movement of its thousand hands of palms and leaves and the good shade where it accepts after long journeyings our steps pours on the weary limb a force of life and sweetness like its mosses dim when the lake is playing with the wind and sun it seems a crimson heart within all ardent has begun to throb with the moving wave the gladiolus and the fervent rose which in their splendour move unshadowed upon their vital stems expose their cups of gold and red within the garden there is healthfulness end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem number 22 of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. 22. It was June in the garden, it was our time, our day, and our gaze with love on everything did fall. They seemed then softly opening, and they saw and loved us both, the roses all. The sky was purer than all limpid thought insect and bird swept through the golden texture of the air unheard our kisses were so fair they brought exultation to both light and bird it seemed as though a happiness at once had skied itself and wished the heavens entire for its resplendent fire and life all pulsing life had entered in into the fissures of our beings to the core to fling them higher and there was nothing but invocatory cries mad impulses prayers and vows that cleave the arched skies and sudden yearning to create new gods in order to believe end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number 23 of afternoon by emil verharen Translated by Charles R. Murphy. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. 23. Your gift of self is ever prodigal. The flight that wings you higher is above, above cessation and all weariness, reaching toward the heaven of fullest love. A clasp of hands, a glance enfevers you. Your heart appears so beautiful and such that i do fear your eyes your lips and that i am unworthy and you love too much alas the fire and tenderness too high for beings who have only one poor heart wet with regrets and thorny with its faults to find but tears to weep with when they part end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 24 of Afternoon by Emil Verharen, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in January 2017. O oh, quiet garden wherein nothing moves, save in the glassy lake the crimson fishes, each a fiery flake. They are the memories that play within our thought, calm and undistraught and clear as in the water's breast of confidence and rest. The red fish leap, and the clear water wells, in the abrupt and potent light, amid the iris-green and bleaching shells and motionless stones 
around the border bright. It is sweet to see them come and go, in all the freshness and lucidity that bathes them so. We have no need to fear or fret, lest they should bring up from below other than a fugitive regret. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 25 of Afternoon by Emil Verheeren. Translated by Charles R. Murphy. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As with others, time and change and strife, morose time and moods of hate, have left their somber scars upon our life. But never yet our hearts have heard, even at close of days unfortunate, the utterance of an unpardonable word. Ardent, luminous sincerity was our wisdom and delight so that our fervid souls in verity tempered themselves as in a bath of light we told each other our most humble griefs grief by grief a rosary told each other weeping tears of love and then confidingly at each avowal with our lips we pressed a kiss on every fault confessed thus simply without weakness or despair we save us from ourselves and worldly harms and ward off suffering and gnawing care, and see our spirits born again, as reappear then washed by rain. When sunlight sweetly dries and warms the purity of glass and gold of window pane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 26 of Afternoon by Emile Verheeren, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The golden ships of summertime that left this morning, mad with space, return now from the blood-red west, sad with slackened pace. Over the ocean now they come, moved by listless, weary rowers, they seem like cradles in the sky, where sleep the autumn flowers lilies with your faded brows you have felt the wind's keen breath only the flaming roses strive to live beyond all death what matter for their fullest flower october days or april bright they have but simple wish to drink even the sanguine light on sombre days when under clouds haggardly the heavens hide they will for one lone ray of sun exalt at christmas tide o oh, you spirits live like them they have not pride that lilies feel but hold within their folds a sacred and immortal zeal end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem 27 of Afternoon by Emile Verheeren, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Fervency of sense, of heart, of soul, vain words created to despoil love's powers. Sun, you distinguish not between your flames of all your evening, dawn, and midday hours. You move all blinded by your proper light through blazing space beneath the arched sky, knowing alone that your great ample power works at things mysterious and high. For love means exaltation's ceaseless deeds. O oh, you whose sweetness sweetens my proud heart, what need to weigh the pure gold of our dream? I love you wholly with my every part. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 28 of Afternoon by Emile Verheeren, translated by Charles R. Murphy, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The moveless beauty of the summer evenings upon the grass where they deploy gives with symbolic offerings, gestureless without a word, the deep repose of joy. Morning with its surprises has gone where no wind rises. Midday itself with folds of velvet air no longer seeks upon the torpid plain. 
now is the hour when the evening once again without a moving leaf or ripple on lake breast comes down from lofty hills to our garden where it seeks its rest o golden splendor of the burnished lake the trees and shadows of them on the reeds and tranquil sumptuous silences that take immutably the kingdom of our hearts so that within us now a vow we cherish of it to live and die and live again like two hearts drunk almost to pain with light who cannot perish end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem twenty nine of afternoon by emil verheren translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by larry wilson you spoke that evening words so beautiful that even the flowers leaning on the breeze suddenly loved us so that one of them to touch us both fell down upon our knees you spoke of the near time when our two lives like two ripe fruits would be upgathered and how the toxin of our fate would knell and love be with us still though youth had fled your voice was round me like a close embrace your burning heart so quiet and so brave i would have seen unfold without a fear the winding road that leads toward the grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem thirty of afternoon by emil verne translated by charles r murphy read for librivox dot org by larry wilson sunlit hours hours of afternoon hours superbly now a part of us your measured pace lights up the garden paths our golden roses kiss you as in pain summer's dying autumn comes now soon hours of fragrant flowering will you come again and yet if fate that holds the stars in leash spare us its evil and its bitter chance perhaps you shall weave some day before my eyes the measured footfalls of your radiant dance and i shall add then to your ardent showers of shade and sunlight on the grassy slope like a supreme immense and sovereign hope the steps and farewells of thy twilight hours End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Afternoon by Emil Verheren. Translated by Charles R. Murphy.